Let us start this lecture with the thought process conscience is the celestial fire that propels us to humanity. And if you look at in the last lecture, uh, we discussed about basically a uh, little bit scope about the combustion and we summarize it uh, all the applications of the combustion and then later on move and about what is fuel, what is oxidizer and then we discuss about types of gaseous fuel and oxidizer and why we need to go for the gaseous fuel particularly in modern time. And because of fact that emission is a great concern, right? so also the efficiency is a great concern that is why we are choosing the gaseous fuel today. And let us look at some of the application of this gaseous fuel and also the various types of fuel and oxidizer. If you look at the LPG, LPG basically liquefied petroleum gas, what is its constituent? Any idea? Butane and propane, right. So, um, uh, propane in some country only the butane will be there, but in our country it is both, right. And oxidizer as I told it is uh, air and oxygen and you can use this thing in uh, domestic burners and internal combustion engine, furnaces and other places, right. And natural gas which is uh, very much used uh, uh, particularly you know in uh, even in domestic like in IIT Kanpur we are having PNG, right pipe natural gas, I think in your hostel it will be there I guess, right. And um, in uh, even in your autos and other things whatever run in Kanpur, it is having now CNG, CNG compressed natural gas, right. It can be used in furnaces and other places as well, right. But keep in mind that this is of course, uh, my way of thinking, uh, earlier days in Kanpur we are having lot of soot you know it was the fumes and suits were there, but now suit has been reduced. But this will be also producing the suit, but those suits will be nano in size, nano suit will be dangerous than the micro suit, are you getting? So, therefore, you are you cannot see those things, but it will be affecting our uh, you know systems health to a greater extent that is my contention, it may be wrong, it may be right you need to find out and then you know explore it, do not go by my words. So, beside this producer gas uh, which is uh, being produced by the basically gasification of the coal or the biomass and it will be used, uh, I have mentioned here IC engines or the piston engines, it can be used for gas, gas turbine engine also, it can be used for burners, it can be used for any other applications, even thermal applications. Like uh, methane I have already told you and then uh, methane particular natural gas contains ma mainly the methane, right. Um, this propane, hydrogen uh, can be used in ice engine, furnace and other application, biogas which was very popular in India, but today it is not there because we do not have uh, you know cows in the village today, <laughs> right. So, cow and the gober gas when I was very much uh, you know uh, popular in village maybe when I was a kid. So, uh, it, it can engine can be run and the burners uh, you know you can use for domestic acetylene you might be knowing like uh, it is used uh, profusely for gas welding metal cutting right. And acetylene like you might have observed that people are producing acetylene gas on the road side particularly when you will move in the GT road, they do not buy, they produce themselves and that is a good thing according to me because they are not dependent on the market, they are producing their own, right. So, uh, you should look at how they are producing, right. So, typical composition of certain gases I am saying like for example, LPG uh, propane is 70 percent and uh, the butane is 30 percent, do not go by that this will be like that, no these are typical, it may vary from you know uh, what you call source to various sources like plant, even in India it also varies, right. And natural gas mostly natural gas is methane, right, because higher percentage of course, this percentage may vary in some places you may find 95 percent, some places you may find 80 percent also, right. Rest of the thing um, C2S6 and some nitrogen will be there, producer gas of course, it is uh, mostly lot contains nitrogen you know like 
and provided it is being produced by using air. But if I use oxygen, this nitrogen will go away. Okay. And uh, CO is as a fuel and hydrogen, right? These are the two major constituent of the fuel. You know, CO is act as a fuel, right? You are aware or not? Okay. CO is a fuel. Biogas again, this is uh, you know uh, contains the methane, 65 percent and 33 percent CO2, which is is a vesicle diluent. And there is a way to absorb this CO2 so that you will get CNG out of biogas. You know, you can chemical treatment, you can improve the quality of the biogas. So, uh, if you look at uh, the LPG, natural gas, and the propane, these are petrochemicals, whereas the producer gas, biogas can be made from the nature, rather, they are sustainable, whereas the petroleum gases cannot be sustainable, like after maybe let us say. 100 years or uh, you know 60 70 years it won't be there why because we are consuming at a fast, faster rate and it is limited so characteristics of uh, gaseous fuel so what are the characteristics of a gaseous fuel one is of course you know heating value now if you say heating values right what does it mean is it some amount of calories will be produced right or joules, right? Calorie is not being used today. Today, you people are more conversant with joule, like right? some joules of energy will be produced per unit mass of fuel consumed, or per one mole of or unit mole of uh, fuel consumed, right? But how I'll measure it? Question arises. I should know how to measure, isn't it? How I'll do that? Any idea? You must have studied this thing because uh, right but i'm just trying to make you to recall calorie meter right so what is the basic principle of calorie meter evaporate no heated okay evaporate means problem okay heated then you will do for example, this uh, do you have any idea about some very standard instrument is being used as a calorie meter, huh? bomb calorie meter. Any other things? Can I use bomb calorie meter for measuring the heating value or the calorific value of a gaseous fuel? Is it possible? Huh? Yes or no? No, then what is the alternative? There is no. Is there any other instrument? Uh huh. Same old. What is that? Or you? Uh? Something else. Sir. Something else. That is a some other thing you are saying. Okay, fine. And it is uh, there in my book. You can look at it. That is basically uh, we will be discussing that. And as I told, we will be discussing about how to measure, right. Let us uh, look at like uh, basically heating values, it is a heat being released per unit volume or unit mass when it undergoes oxidation at normal pressure and temperature, that is very important. So, this part is very important because if this temperature is different and pressure is different, the amount of heat release will be different or not. Right. So, if it is different, then it would not be, I cannot use it because I should have a some reference. The reference is basically 1 atmosphere pressure right, and 298 Kelvin, 25 degree Celsius. Okay. That is the reference used as a standard across the globe. Okay. So, and there will be also higher heating value, right. there will be lower heating value. Higher heating value will call the heating value of the fuel when water is condensed because you condense it that means you will have to what you call take out some energy from that then only it will condense okay that means it will come to the lower temperature right then only water will condense otherwise it won't condense na isn't it if it is high temperature will it water condense no right it will be lower one then only it will be condensed. So, therefore, 
that heating values will be known as high heating values, there will be low heating values. The amount of heat release by burning 1 kg of fuel assuming that latent heat of vaporization reaction product is not recovered because you will have to uh, provide this latent heat of vaporization therefore, it is a lower heating values right. And lower heating values is equal to higher heating values minus the amount of uh, what we call mass of the water divided by mass of the fuel into delta H V. This delta H V is basically heat of vaporization of water at 298.15 Kelvin because this is a standard reference and if you look at uh, this reference what I have given is also like that 1298.15 right. So, if you know one of them you can find out basically if you know this uh, high heating values right uh, you can get low heating values okay, and vice versa because of course, you should know the latent heat of vaporization. So, now uh, we look at how to measure this heating value we had a discussion just uh, in the beginning of uh, this uh, aspect and uh, how to measure right. Some of you told it is a bump calorimeter and this thing, but bump calorimeter you cannot use for measuring the calorie value of gaseous fuel right. And there is a uh, another instrument which is known as Junker's calorimeter right. So, Junker's calorimeter looks like this. So, if you look at uh, the water is flowing through this and what is this one any idea what you call this one this is the instrument right this to measure the water flow rate right what do you call any idea certainly no it is not venturi meter any anybody yes that is right rotor meter right rotor meter right and uh, once water will enter into this you will have to measure the temperature this is a thermometer you can use any other temperature sensor right and water will go through this chamber and then it will be you know till this like uh, it will be thermometer water will be going out here this will be water is flowing in and this will be going out water. So, you will have to measure the temperature here and the fuel will be you will have to also measure here this is a rotameter and you will have to burn the this fuel and there will be a flame and these are heat exchangers right and the hot gases of course will be passing through this and going out it will go through this and then go out through this right and then the heat will be transferred from this flame to this water right. Then you will measure the inlet temperature, you will measure the outlet temperature of this water and then you will also measure the water flow rate. Then you know the heat balance you do, then you will find out how much amount of heat being generated. And you know how much fuel flow rate it is having burnt right. Of course, you assume that it is complete combustion is taking place otherwise you know if there is a soot formations and other thing that has to be taken care right because that is not being burnt out you know like or this being produced. So, you will have to take care and then you can measure of course, uh, there might be some condensation because right will be taking place and you will use this water also can uh, measure it and then uh, do the calculations right. Sir, what do you call this item? This is known as Junker's calorimeter. As I told you that heating value is calculated from the water flow rate and rise in temperature and of course, the C p values you know like if you look at the delta H uh, change in enthalpy will be basically water mass flow rate of water C p and delta T delta T. So, this from this you will get and then you know the mass flow rate of what you call the fuel. So, therefore, the calorie values if you look at delta H of fuel is equal to delta H W by m dot fuel right. 
okay so cp you will have to cp is your specific it values and this is your temperature difference and this is mass flow water mass flow rate right so from this you can get very easily okay is it fine so let us now look at the liquid fuel and oxidizer liquid fuel is one of the you know important energy source particularly for transport sector why because the gaseous fuel to store and make it to move it is very difficult and it should be at high pressure right of course it is being used today because of better technology right in vehicles we are using compressed natural gas right but uh, you will have to carry or a big tank you know and high pressure so high pressure means material thickness will be more and other thing of course the composite material coming up so that will be lighter you know uh, can uh, the casing you can can you will get so that you can carry the fuel but however the liquid fuel is easy crude oil is found from the organic sources animals vegetables right these are basically petroleum products which are being uh, generated long time back we, and these were uh, entrapped in rocks under high pressure temperature for million years and then you get the petroleum now we are using right so uh, is there any idea how we will get liquid fuel you know suppose this petroleum will be over from where we will get liquid fuel for our transportation any idea biodiesel bio right right we can basically go into the bio which is sustainable but for our country it will be difficult why to get into the bio fuel where we will get bio we are not getting you know enough land for the food <laughs> and population is high are you getting and the consumption of the fuel is increasing at alarming rate <laughs> at a very faster alarming is very faster rate so therefore it is a very big question for us what we will do after this if we will adapt to the present lifestyle that means we will have to look at the lifestyle so some of the uh, fuels i have just jotted down here but uh, generally whenever you use a liquid uh, gasoline or or the fuel for the general application except for the space applications we go for the air okay that means whenever we are using the general in on this earth or something we are using for combustion particularly we go for the air air is cheaper right and it is a gaseous uh, but whenever we go for a special application like space applications or any other things then we may go for liquid oxygen and um, rf and red fuming nitric oxide and uh, n2o4 right nitrogen tetroxide okay and there is several liquid fuels liquids are there uh, which i'll be not discussing but the fuels is gasoline gasoline means basically petrol what do you use and it is being used in spark ignition engines and aircraft piston engines right and uh, you know like in our uh, institute we are having aircrafts and high speed diesels is used uh, of course the diesel not only high speed diesel also right is compression ignition engine and uh, furnace oil used in furnace which is a low quality oil but it is being used and kerosene is being used in aircraft gas turbine engine ram jets even domestic uh, cooking stoves are being used alcohol is used in ice engine you might be aware that in our petrol we are adding some alcohol uh, in order to reduce the um, emission and also the cost will be lower so that uh, you know that is another reason and uh, beside this we use uh, also for a space application hydrogen as a fuel 
UDMH unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrogen, MMH monomethyl hydrogen, liquid hydrogen and triethyl amine and several others because if I put then you know you will feel bored. <laughs> there are several fuels are there similarly for the oxidizers right. So, what I am trying to uh, expose you people about some of the liquid fuels not all there are several like biodiesel I have not mentioned here and there are several any oil whatever you use for vegetable oil na, can be used as a fuel. You people might be knowing the diesel when he started that engine he used what vegetable oil <laughs> okay diesel long time back. So, um, questionnaire is how to measure the calorie value of liquid fuel which we have already discussed some of you told we can use the bump calorie meter right a typical bump calorie meter I have shown here this is your basically a crucible and you can consider this as a bomb is a closed chamber bomb means what closed chamber right and where um, this crucible is there like where you will uh, have some sample weighing sample means the fuel right basically liquid you will weigh and uh, put it and there will be ignition where like which will be ignited and uh, there will be of course for ignition you should have electrode and you will give sufficient amount of energy from the battery or some other sources and this is your uh, what you call chamber right this is the your chamber where the water is being filled and you are having a stirrer right it will be rotated so that uniformity can be maintained and this is the temperature uh, you know thermometer whose temperature will be measured that means you will have to measure the initial temperature you have to measure the final temperature when this thing and here people use oxygen right right this is the oxygen which will be coming in and then it will come in contact with liquid fuel you will have to ignite it and then uh, there is a air jacket which is given right and there is of course the water jacket right why this is given any idea this air jacket that means thermal conductivity or the thermal diffusivity okay right so that heat transfer that means in heat should not transfer from this basically to uh, you know uh, this thing that is being done and then again some water is given such that you know if anything even if it is going so that you can also measure that but people do not do that so that no heat will be going out right and it is a similar way that means you take the temperature difference you know the Cp value of water you know the what is the mass of the water there is a mass flow rate here it is a mass okay of water and then you know how much heat is being absorbed by that and how much fuel you have burned and then you can find out the calorific values right. And this is known as bomb calorimeter. Keep in mind that this is not only used for liquid fuel, it is it can be used for solid fuel as well, right. So, this is being used profusely for measuring the calorific value, and now uh, it has been very sophisticated. You can get some computer interface and other thing, very nice thing has come. But the basic principle is this and according to me when you are a student you should use the basic one but if you use the interface and then sophisticated thing you won't learn what is happening <laughs> you know everything will come you just put that thing this thing that value will come this is a calorie value right then at the result what will happen you will, won't learn what is happening it's like input output <laughs> and that is happening today <laughs> right but it is very important to uh, you know uh, do this experiment so that it will be can be used and keep in mind that this is uh, important thing is that you can also you know um, uh, what you call burn this in this combustion presence of oxygen at a very high pressure right high pressure you can use and do that therefore it is known as bomb calorimeter right kind of thing so that reaction will be taking place and do that let us look at properties of the liquid fuel and um, so, uh, what are the properties of the liquid fuel? Any idea? 
one is of course calorie value any other things no ideas huh? low ignition temperature or ignition temperature okay that is uh, rather you call it as a self ignition temperature okay uh -huh. Uh -huh. what do you call that volatile. volatile there will be some properties you know like which will be looking i am talking properties okay you can any other properties Ah, viscosity also, right? Very good. Any other thing? What I would suggest you please think about it. We will discuss that in the next lecture. Okay? Thank you very much.